All right, <clears throat> welcome everyone. Um, we, we're we glad that um, <sighs> we're able to um, come online again um, for another episode in the ongoing session. <clears throat> um, which we call Mastering Supernatural Leadings. We are very excited to, <clears throat> to be here again and um, to be able to see every one of us. So good day to you. <clears throat> good day to everyone. Grace, grace, God's grace. They multiply to you. Welcome again. All right, now um, <clears throat> we have been um, we have been doing this now for for quite some time, you know, for a couple of weeks, and um, it's been very interesting in that there are different components to um, supernatural leading that we have. We have um, we have looked at, you know, touched on. Okay, so we from the last um, <clears throat> session we had, we had wanted to tie up some of these things together before we um, decided to answer a question. There were certain questions that had been sent. So we just, you know, took the time out to, you know, deal with one of the questions. And um, a lot more questions have been coming in. All right. You know, and um, I, I, I believe that it's very um, important that um, we take the questions, you know, as they come. You know, the subject of the subject of, um, you know, um, supernatural leading, the subject of being led of God, the subject of um, <clears throat> knowing the will of God, walking in God's perfect will, discerning the plans of God, discerning the purposes of God, you know, um, understanding the, you know, um, in quote, the different ways, the different ways that you and I can be led, the different ways that we can be led. All right. Notice um, during one of the sessions we had, you know, um, dealt with the subject of um, or the concept rather of, you know, what is popularly referred to as the different ways that God leads. All right. The different ways that God leads. Um, I um, hope that we <clears throat> remember that particular episode. We dealt with that concept of the different ways that God leads. Now, the general understanding, all right, that is um, popularly out there in the body of Christ is, you know, the different that God leads. Now, we dealt with that, all right, and um, in the context of the scriptures we looked at, we um, looked at it as the different ways that the believer is led, the different ways that the believer hears, processes, perceives, all right, the leadings of God. 
All right, that's that's so very important. That's so very important. Um, um, I hope we um, may be able to, you know, touch on that because we 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 just touched on some of these things and we said that we're going to at a certain time during the series we're going to begin to tie them together. So some of these things which we have talked about, we are going to be referencing them and you know buttressing a little bit more on them. All right, but um, like I said earlier, it's very important that we take the questions. You know, the the, the subject, the subject of um, being led of God is um, is so very important. You see, so very important. You would see that. Um, the number one, um, the number one, um, cause for many of the issues, majority of the issues that <clears throat> believers encounter or find themselves in, all right, is directly and indirectly connected to supernatural leading. If you look at, you know, um, the body of Christ, if you look at, um, you know, um, believers, all right, the world over, you will see that um, the number one, you know, um, cause of the, the issues, the, the, the unsavory, situations all right um uh, unfortunate circumstances you know um you know that as believers all right we find ourselves in usually is always directly and indirectly associated with the subject of being led of god the subject of um knowing the will of God, the subject of discerning the will of God. You see, so it, it, it's, it's one of the reasons why, um, one of the reasons why we have taken the time, you know, as long as we have done to stay with this subject, you know, and in doing that from the very beginning, we are taking the time to explain a lot of concepts surrounding supernatural leading and explain, you know, a lot of processes that has been, um, to some extent, largely misunderstood, all right, largely misinterpreted in regards to supernatural leading, all right. And we have said again and again that supernatural leading can be mastered. It can be mastered, you know, it can be so mastered that the believer, you know, can move on from that subject, all right, permanently, as it were, and go on into, you know, you know, you know, working in the kingdom, you know, exploring the kingdom and and functioning the kingdom. The subject of mastering or the art of mastering supernatural leading can be mastered, completely mastered, completely mastered. You know, it's one of the reasons why in the course of this series, we are also taking at the time in connection to this subject to look at um, the, the, the senses of man, you know, the exercise of the senses of the heart, you know, in which we went as far as putting up diagrams to describe. So some of this is what we are going to be, you know, looking at, you know, tying them together, all right? But we want to implore everyone to um, um, maximize the these resources and listen to them, you know, and listen and listen. All right, with an end to you know exercising ourselves in this truth. You know, um, like I said earlier, the majority of the challenges. All right, the you know, a uh, um, um, greater part of the, you know, unsavory situations and circumstances, you know, that 
that believers find themselves in is usually directly connected and of course also indirectly connected to you know mastering supernatural leading you see all right so um welcome once again yes good evening good evening to you welcome again all right now um um certain questions have been asked which um i hope we will be able to you know address and also um some questions also came in um during um the last two sessions or episodes that we've had so far that um we couldn't address but of course they were sent in via the chat channel of the um zoom and you know that um, as soon as the meeting you know concludes um, and you come on online again the there's no provision for saving you know the 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 the, the chart so um if you wouldn't mind we would appreciate if you can help to um put up the question again for those of us who you know um, um did send or type in questions in the last episode and the episode before the last all right okay so welcome everyone once again all right so um So while we wait for that, um, I would love for us to, you know, I would love to share some talk with us still in the same um, um, subject. Um, so we'll wait for the questions and answer them, and we'll move on. And please want the questions to come in, you know, as quickly as possible. All right. Now, um, so a lot of times, um, a lot of times, um, believers have often wondered at um, or have often, you know, developed some sort of a, you know, mystical perception about supernatural leading. You know, the number of believers who think of the subject of supernatural leading as um, as something that cannot fully be understood. You know, some believers on the other hand, all right, um, have, you know, developed, you know, some false um, understanding, you know, in regards to um, supernatural leading as it applies to some as being um, something a person must be gifted for you know so some believers think of certain persons as being gifted in knowing the will of god more than others or being gifted in 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 um enjoying supernatural leading than others so you you out there you have all kinds of um wrong um, mindset wrong mindset wrong mindset all right now it's one of the reasons why from the very beginning of this series we went as far as um, look at man all right how that man by virtue of his um, structure his making his architecture design he is capable he's um, capable of um, of being um is capable of discerning spiritual movement is capable of um of of you know via the exercise of his heart is capable of um you know of knowing you see of perceiving of discerning spiritual activities you see so it's not um it is not a gift thing it is more of a nature thing you see it is not um, an anointing thing that is, you know, thought to be the exclusive right of a few, 
No, it is um, a structural, architectural, you know, you know, based enablement. You know, the scripture says in the book of Proverbs 20, verse 27, it says that the spirit of man, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle, one says, is the lamp of the Lord, with which the Lord, all right, instructs him, with which the Lord lightens him up, with which the Lord leads him, all right? In the book of Job, Elihu, all right, all right, says that there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty, you see, giveth him understanding. You see, he says there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty, you see, giveth him understanding. Okay, so um, okay, uh, seen one question here already. Yes, yes, bro, Emmanuel, it's not a new question. All right, uh, this question I'm seeing um, is something we dealt with, um, um, I think um, two weeks back now, or two episodes, two, three episodes back. All right, so just like you've just said, it's not a new question. All right, so we actually have dealt with this. In fact, <laughs> We, we, we um, dealing with this question ended up taking the whole time. So, you know, so I, I, I believe that, um, you know, the time we spent in dealing with this question, um, you know, helped to, you know, you know, address very basic, um, you know, understand as it relates to it. All right. So um, there are no questions, or right? I'm not seeing any besides the one that uh, Bro Emmanuel has sent, all right. All right, now, um, so let's just continue with the thoughts, all right, until maybe another question, then we'll just move on from there. All right, so um, the way man was designed, the way man was designed, all right, he was designed, you know, um, as a being, by who by nature all right is capable capable of um, interfacing interacting with the world around him you see with the world around him now in spite of the fact that um man you know sinned against god disobeyed god and like we you know popularly say fell all right, um, man, notwithstanding the fall, notwithstanding his disobedience to God, did not lose his senses. He did not lose his senses. All right, all right, he didn't lose his senses. All right, what just happened besides the the fact that he disobeyed God was that on account of his disobedience to God, on account of his fall, all right, his perception of God, his, um, his heart's perception of God, all right, was shut down. You see, because he moved from the consciousness, all right, to God, from the consciousness or conscious awareness of God, of his life, of his kingdom, into a conscious awareness to another reality, which we can now refer to as sin or as death. You see? So it's not that man lost his senses. No, it is that, all right, on account of the fall, on account of the disobedience, all right, his conscious awareness to God, all right, 
you know, faded out, as it were, you know, or, you know, um, um, blanked out, as it were, you see. And he came into a conscious awareness of another life, another life that opened up to him in what is referred to as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You see, you see. So when the scripture tells us th that um, the natural man in First Corinthians chapter two, it says the natural man, all right, does not receive. He is incapable of receiving the things of God. You see, the natural man is incapable of processing, of appreciating, is incapable of um, handling, interfacing, interacting with the things of God. You see, what is of God, the natural man is incapable of processing. You see, but he has the capability to process. You see, on account of the fall, he is capability to process that other reality of existence other than the reality of God's life, all right, has now become default. You see, has now become default. Now, that is actually what happened. That is actually what you see when, um, when you see people initiated into the occult, when you see people, you know, um, read, you know, commit their heart to, to certain, um, you know, um, um, principles, pro spiritual protocols, all right, that in turn, all right, activates or heightens or tunes them, all right, tunes them consciously to the reality of darkness. You see, to the reality of that, that's what happens with people who are initiated into sorcery, who are initiated into cults, who are initiated into, you know, all kinds of um, spiritual, um, you know, um, um, operations, all right, without the Holy Spirit of God. You see, by going through those rituals, all right, they gain a conscious awareness, you see, to the, to the reality of darkness. You see, that is also what you see when you see certain persons who tell you that they are oppressed. Now, of course, they don't, they don't realize they are oppressed. You see certain persons tell you that they hear voices. They see, they see, um, they see um, 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 people that every other person around them do not see, you know? And, and, and you can tell they are oppressed because the effect of what they are seeing, all right, is not making them act normal. You see, it's not making them, you know, act normal. It's an oppression. You know, it's an oppression. There are, there are, there are, there are a number of persons I've had to minister to like that. You see, in such instances, you are breaking a demonic oppression. De breaking a demonic oppression. So what happens is that they come under an attack by the power of Satan, all right, by which they are, heart's gate are tuned into the de demonic. You see, their heart gate are tuned into the demonic. Uh, you know, I, I, I remember now, um, you know, uh, some 20, about um, 26 years ago, about 26 years ago, all right, I, I, I had a brother who, um, came under an attack, came under a demonic attack, all right, came under a demonic attack and um, actually passed on, he died, all right, he was um, a minister of the gospel, all right, and, um, you know, going, you know, you know, into um, places to get people saved, hold crusades, cast out devils, you know, and all of that, and um, now what we were told, all right, because at, at that time, I, I was, um, at um, my sister's place in the south. I was there briefly for a period of three years. All right, this was around um, between the between the year 1993, 94, 95, 96. 
All right. So this happened in 94, 95. All right. So what we were told was that he had passed on. You know, so it was <laughs> it was when I came back to Lagos, all right, in 96, that we heard the story. He came under attack, and the next thing was um, he started saying he was seeing people carrying coffins. You know, he would scream and say, they are coming close. They are carrying coffins. They are coming close to him. They are coming close to him. You know, now long and short, he passed on. He died. You know, he died. You see, um, <laughs> you know, I remember somebody asked me a question. And I said, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, um, in addressing the believers, you know, spiritual position, all right, amongst other things in relation to the asserting of his authority over Satan's power, all right? One of the reasons why I address that subject, all right, you know, with the level of militancy that with which I do, all right, is one, because of the scriptures, all right? The, no place in the scriptures are we told to be gentle with demons, all right? But that's one, all right, scriptures. Number two, from personal experience, all right? I, I, I had personal experience of being demonically oppressed from as soon as I was born, all right? I began to have demonic oppression from the time that I was just a couple of months old, you know? And that went on till I was about um, seven, eight, nine years old. You understand, you know, that that's that, all right? Then the second, all right, also based on personal experience, is I saw a brother whom I loved so much, I loved him so much, died because he was demonically oppressed, died. Everyone that was around him couldn't do anything. Couldn't do anything. You know, he died. You know, in fact, because of how close I, I was to him, my, my dad didn't tell me. In fact, I didn't get to know he had passed or not until about a year plus, you know, a year plus. All the while I was thinking, oh, my brother is doing well. You know, he had passed on since like 95. All right. I didn't get to know not until like 96, <laughs> you know, not until like 96, you know. So hearing the story, hearing the story and, um, you know, some of that gruesome details, you know, of demonic, you know, it's not film trick. <laughs> I don't go into all this detail now. Demonic stuff, you know, demonic stuff, you know. So, um, so they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, the, they are, they are people who come under such oppression, you know, come under such oppression. But the point is this. Now, I actually was saying, trying to go somewhere. Now, the point is this. You see someone in the instance I'm trying to, you know, um, point out to us, who is saved, suddenly comes under a demonic oppression, and his spiritual senses, all right, the awareness of his heart on account of that demonic oppression suddenly tunes on to the demonic. So he hears stories of people telling you, I'm seeing spirits. I'm seeing my head. My head is hurting me. I'm seeing spirits. Um, you know, stuff like that. You know, or people that live in what you call haunted houses. They live in houses where they tell you at night, they hear movement in the roof. They hear movement. Those are demonic oppression. You see, so you see these people, all right, who in quote are not um who, who are not um as sensitive, all right, as they are to the demonic, they are not as sensitive as that to the kingdom. Do you understand that? They don't see angels, you know, passing, you know, they don't you know, hear fragrances of the spirit of God, but are tuned to the demonic. When they hear movement, it's demonic movement. You see, when they see something passing, something dark, something oppressive, you see. Now, the, the same thing actually, you know, is what happens to those who are not saved, who um, become initiated into the demonic, become initiated, you know, to, to sorcery, to 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 Illuminati, to all kinds of cults and tell you that, you know, they now see in the spirit, you know, or some will tell you, you know, that um, 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 I'm, I remember a, a home I had gone to, I'd gone to, to, 
to um, um, a dear you know, sister at the time had told me about um, um, her, her aunt had wanted to see me because of a certain issue she was having. And their place at the time wasn't too far from where we were living at the time. This was as far back as um, 2011, all right? So I said, okay, I was going to come. So on this certain day, I went there, went to the house. And you know, so while I was in the living room waiting for the aunt to show, all right, I suddenly became aware of a darkness over the house. It was a darkness over the place, you know? And so I spoke to this lady and told her what I was. Now she was someone I was discipling at the time. So I was saying this to her, not to scare her, but to teach her. So I, I began to tell her what I was perceiving, what I was seeing, you know? So she said, hmm, okay. So what do we do? I said, well, just um, for you to know. So while I was doing that, I continued to investigate it. Now, in the process of doing that, it dawned on me that that cloud, that thing I was perceiving, that I was aware of, that I was sensing over the home, all right, was giving rise to by reason of certain materials, all right, books that were present in the home. Now, so we were quiet after I had told her what I was sensing. Then as soon as I sensed this other information, all right, I said it to her. And she was like, wow, that her nephew had been reading a particular book that his dad had just brought. Dad had been abroad and had just recently returned from, you know, outside the country and, you know, and this boy had been reading it. And the subject of the book had to do with um, what is called the third eye, how to open your third eye. Do you understand that? <laughs> you know, now, the long and short of the story is that the, the, content of that book which had within the last couple of weeks had been engaged by this lady's nephew all right had brought an oppression you see as a reason of engaging the content all right the 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 the, the, the darkness that that book the information in that book opens up into had come over the home now while i was explaining this all right, to the lady, she quickly called out to her nephew to come to the living room. So when he came and I told him what I was sensing, the boy opened up and began to talk about the father. He's been having oppression. Now, while we we're having this conversation, before I was going to minister to the boy, the dad, not in that all the while, the dad was in his bedroom listening <laughs> to the things we we're sharing. Now, he had been going through one series of bad luck, all right, after another. Now, long and short is that all of this, you know, drama <laughs> was as a result of a book. Of a book. You see, of a book, all right, that contained information about how to open one's spiritual eyes. You see, but not the power of the Holy Spirit not through Jesus, you see, who is not only the door to the Father, but who is the legitimate door to the spirit realm. You see, now I said all of this to say that this, the example I just gave, all right, is an example of someone who didn't go to a court, as it were, to be initiated. He didn't go to a meeting, a coven. He just read the book and recited the, the protocols, all right? And, you know, went through the protocols and had his eyes open. And as a result, along with the opening of his eyes, of his senses, the demonic flowed into the house, flowed into the home. You see? So there was nothing, as it were, that that book gave to him. The book only contained information, all right, that helped to turn on his senses. You see, that helped to turn on his senses. You see, that helped to turn on his senses. 
You see, and one of the things we have said and again and again is the fact that, you see, how effective we become as believers in the exercise of our spiritual senses, the senses of our being, all right, go a long way in determining, all right, um, the, 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 um, the ways we will be able to descend the will of God. You see, the manner and the ways in which we'll be able to descend the will of God. You know, I've said this during the you know, series that um, the difference between what some people call open vision and inner vision. You know, some people have the opinion that, you know, God is all who determines, like we said earlier, the different ways people are led. No, no, no. Now, that's why in dealing with this subject, we began dealing with this subject first, all right, on the basis of what every believer on account of what his spiritual framework is, is capable of, all right? We didn't address the subject of master spiritual leading on the basis of gifts. You see, on the basis of gifts. It's because a lot of times, all right, one of the things about um, many books that have been written about, you know, supernatural leading is that um, many of them tend to, on the basis of how certain gifts experience supernatural revelation. And usually it is frustrating. It's frustrating because why many believers read those books, all right? Those books present ways that supernatural revelations, all right, are received within the confine, within the power of their gift, which in turn puts the believer, the saint, all right, on the path of wanting to experience supernatural and eventually majority of folks, all right, because they do not experience supernatural in that way, become frustrated. They become frustrated. Now, it's one of the reasons why, as it relates to um, the senses, the senses, the spiritual senses of man, all right, and also the the ways by, by which you know supernaturally a person can experience revelations within the confine or the parameter of peculiar gift all right we took the time to explain that the different ways believers experience supernatural leading is subjective right, to the, the 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 structure and the alignment all right, the functional alignment, different senses, the different senses, all right, of man, of the believer. All right, like I said one time, that the difference between open vision and inner vision, all right, all right, is what? Is the functional operation of, you know, two or more senses. All right, of of our gates. You see, which is something that if the believer understands, all right, commits himself to practicing, all right, he will be able to descend the will of God at will. You see, at will at will you see for example the believer can experience vision at will you see his ability to experience god's will through vision or as vision or visually is subjective to what the exercise of specific senses the exercise of specific you know, it, it, it's like it's like the senses of our body. We've explained this, you know, in the last, you know, in in previous in episodes. It's like the senses of your body. All right, your sense of sight, your sense of smell, your sense of taste, your sense of hearing, your sense of touch or feeling. You see, 
Now, when a fact, when a reality is presented before you, you see, how you are able to, you know, um, interface, all right? Oh, no, let me put it this way. Um, what you eventually make of that information, what conclusion you reach about that information is subjective to which of your senses you use to interface that information. You see? So if an information is presented before you and you interface that information with a sense, with your sense of sight, you see, your conclusion, your conclusive deduction about that information, all right, will be based on what? Your visual, you know, interface, all right? If that same information is interfaced with your sense of touch, you see, your conclusive deduction will be subjective to what? To what? Your sense of touch. Same would go for what? Hearing and taste. You see? Now, you see, not understanding this is what has made a lot of people to think, to have a wrong, you know, impression, opinion, all right, about the fact that discerning the will of God is solely the responsibility of God. You know, so you see believers tell you things like, you know, why praying about a subject matter, you know, I want you to know what God's will is. They'll tell you, well, you know, God has not spoken. You see, I'm still waiting on God, you know, I'm still waiting on, he has not spoken, you know, and, and you're wondering, you know, what do you mean he hasn't spoken? Have you ever wondered at what, what, what will God benefit? What does God benefit from delaying you? <laughs> from, from, what does he benefit from keeping you waiting for two weeks to find out what his will is about a matter? What does he benefit from keeping you, keeping you for three days? You see, before coming to know what his will is, all right, in a given direction, what does he benefit from that? Someone said, no, he's trying to teach you patience. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's not how he does that. That's not how he does that. Now, these are some of the reasons why we explain many of these things, you know, in previous episodes, previous episodes. And we have said that if, if you listen to this, all right, and meditate around this. It will change your life. It will change your experience. You see, of God's will, it will change your understanding, your, your experience of walking in the will of God, of walking in the purposes of God for your life. You see, it is the place of having understood this or against the backdrop of this, there is the place of the exercising of your senses. The exercising of your sen senses. Now, this is the reason why in one of the episodes we had said that the same way that the exercising of your body senses is subjective to your will. All right, it is the same way that the exercising of your spiritual senses, you understand, all right, also is subjective to your will. You know, the same way that the exercise, for example, of your soul senses, all right? The gate of your soul, your imagination. You see, you don't, for example, you don't need God. You know, for example, in a sense, you don't need God to exercise your sense of imagination. You see, you don't need God, you understand what I mean, to exercise your sense of emotion. You see, the same way that you don't need God to tell you to open your eyes in the morning. You know, when you, when you are up from sleep, all right, you don't wait for God to tell you, open your eyes now. Okay, look now. No, no. You don't need God to tell you to, to, to exercise your sense of smell, to be able to tell whether there's a good stench in the, in the, in the, in the atmosphere or there's a good aroma or fragrance. You don't, you don't need God. When you put, put something into your mouth, you see, you don't need God, you know, in that sense, 
to, 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 to have you exercise your sense of taste, to be able to tell if that thing that you are contacting with your sense of taste, all right, is sour, is bitter, is sweet, all right, or if the taste at best is bland. You see? You see? And we must understand that what the will of God is, is not hidden from us. It is always present to us. But what you need to do to know what the will of God is, which the will of God, which is always present, which is, which is as manifested before us as God is, is the exercising of our senses. The exercising of our senses. The exercising of our senses. Now, now, <laughs> you know, some people tell you like, that, you know, some people are giving to visions. Now, now, don't forget, we are dealing with this subject on the basis of the structure of man without taking into consideration gifts of the spirit. You see? Now, I'm sure you, you must have heard certain people say about certain people that, oh, she's very emotional. All right, I've heard people say things like that. Oh, he's too emotional. Oh, he's very imaginative. Very imaginative. Oh, this guy, oh no, he's too logical. It's too logical. <laughs> now, what we need to understand is, how people become that is subjective to, the, to a number of factors. One, the factors, the factor of, the, of their environment, the role their environment played in shaping their soul. You see, the role their environment played in the shaping, in the formation, you see, of their heart. Nobody is born emotional, too emotional from the womb. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? Nobody is born with the gift of being too emotional. You see, nobody is born with the gift of being too imaginative. You see, a person becomes, you know, is considered too imaginative. All right, as a result of, you know, the impact, all right, of his environment on his soul, on his soul. You see, the person who is said to be too emotional, too emotional, all right, is that way, is that way, you know, or has become like that as a result of, you know, certain influences in his environment, which have all together helped to shape him, all right, who he now is, that now makes you say of him that he's too emotional, he's too logical, he's too, you understand that? Now, you must understand that the same does apply to your spirit. A person can be said to be too visual, is given to vision. Now I'm not talking about a, I'm not about an operation of vision that is subjective to gifts. You see, I love to teach this stuff very, very simply. You see, because sometimes when you talk about this, people quickly think, oh, okay, okay, he has he has a prophetic gift. Will you will you stop that? Uh, will you stop that and just listen? You see, the moment you go that route, you immediately set about a war that disqualifies you or disqualify others. You see? So there are certain factors, all right, that a person can be exposed to, which in turn can help trigger, all right, trigger the exercise of his of a person's visual, spiritual visual sense 
You see, all right, which just like what you see of someone who is very imaginative, it can also be said, you see, of someone that he's, he's, he's given to vision. Not even on the basis of gift or prophetic gift. No, he's given to vision. All right, there are certain factors that a person that can inform, all right, a person's um, activated sense of knowing, you see, so that a person can actually boast. He can, you know, the same way somebody can say, you know what, I'm very imaginative. So, you know, you know, I'm very imaginative. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much, I'm very, I'm careful what I say because, you know, it will, it will, you know, my imagination would blow it up. It would, <laughs> there are people like that. You see, there are people like that. Okay. Now, in the same way, you can, a person, all right, obeying the same rules, all right, can also, all right, be said to be one who, who has very strong impressions. See, I, I, I just know things. I just know things. You know, I, I just know things. Or I just see things. You know, or I have a very strong sense of impression. No, that's not pride. The same way you don't consider to be proud, someone who tells you, all right, that I'm very logical. You, see, you know, if, 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 it, if it does not make logical sense to me, I can't process it. Or someone tells you, you know what, I'm very emotional. I'm very, now you don't consider such a person to be what? To be proud. Now, in the same way, you do not consider such a person to be proud. In that same way, we shouldn't consider a person who tells you, I just know things. Or, you know, I just see things. I just see things. It actually, you that think such a person is proud, you are the one that is ignorant. You that is thinking he's too proud, he brags a lot. He brags a lot about his sin, his sin gift. <laughs> you are the one that is ignorant. You see? So in the same way that certain factors, certain factors present in our environment, all right, can, you know, or play a major role in helping to, you know, determine the, 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 the operational, you know, um, state of our senses, the heightened, you know, state of our senses, all right, all right, bodily, in that same way that it also can apply to the heightening of our senses in our soul, in that same way, it can also apply to the heightening of our senses, the senses of our spirit. Of our spirit. Now, not understanding this very basic explanation we've been dealing with, all right, is the number one reason, amongst other reasons, that has prevented many believers from growing in their experience of easily, effectively, you know, discerning the will of God without struggle. Discerning the will of God. You see, without struggle. You see, discerning the operations of, of the kingdom in them and around them without struggle. You see, because discerning the will of God, you see, discerning the activities of the kingdom, discerning the operations of the demonic, all right, are all primarily subjective to the exercising of your senses, of your senses, of your senses. see of your senses now this is one of the reasons why many a time when believers all right when believers begin to step into you know spiritual operations via 
gifts of the spirit, spiritual operations via the anointings of the Lord. All right. You notice for majority of such folks, all right, they 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 step in, they are they are their initial, you know, stepping out in the supernatural is usually characterized with a lot of fear. Because they do not what because that supernatural manifestation they are coming into is not built on an existing foundation of what a history and if of effectiveness, all right, of the exercising of the heart before manifestations of the gift begins to come in. So it's one of the reasons why a lot, a lot of believers, when they begin to step into the manifestation, for example, word of knowledge, all right, for a lot of them, it is usually initially very confusing. Word of wisdom is usually very confusing. There is a lot of fear. You see, but where believers have been taught this, they will not experience fear, all right, to step out in faith, where the manifestation of word of knowledge is concerned, to step out in faith where the manifestation of descending of spirit is concerned, to step out in faith where the manifestation of the word of knowledge or word of wisdom or prophecy or interpreting of tongues is concerned. You see, it is the reason why, as a matter of fact, many believers, as they step out in supernatural manifestation, all right, they have a they have a life, all right, of, you know, missing it. They have a track record of missing it severally before they gain mastery. The reason for missing it is not because, you know, like we've developed doctrine around that, that you know what, you know, it's okay to miss it. Making it appear as though you will miss it, you should miss it when you start. No, no. You see, if believers have been taught, all right, about the supernatural senses of their heart, all right, and engage in the exercising of themselves in the same, you see, are we paying attention? Now, there will be no need to miss it, you see, when they begin to step out into supernatural manifestations of gifts and anointings. Because where the missing should have occurred, should have been where? Where they were trying to do what? Master the exercising of what? Of the senses of your heart. Because in the place of mastering the senses of their heart, all right, they over time ought to have gained what? Boldness, mastery, all right? Which now becomes the foundation that informs what the audacity and confidence with which what they step out in word of knowledge, they step out in the workings of miracles, they step out in the gift of prophecy, they step out in the supernatural generally. You see, it's one of the reasons why, in helping believers understand this many a time, all right. I use different illustration to help who grasp this. One of such I use is the practice of meditation. You know, in the practice of meditation, all right, amongst other things that happens, that happens, you know, as benefit, amongst other benefit that comes from the practice of meditation is the, the flow of divine illumination. You see, Coming into revelation, understanding of truth, all right, you didn't have before as you meditate. Now, in that place and in that art, in that state, in that environment of meditation, you see the divine illumination of God, the divine illumination of, 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 of revelation that dawns upon your heart comes with so much confidence. You see, that is not different and should not be separate from the confidence with which what you are to receive supernatural revelation by word of wisdom, all right? And step out and give it. Hello, are we here? Is this making sense to you? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
All right. So you see the, the, the boldness, the confidence. You see, because you see, divine, genuine divine revelation, all right, comes with a peace. It comes with a confidence, all right? It's just like what the scripture says in the book of James about the wisdom that comes from above. You see, about the wisdom that comes from above, all right? I want us to read the book of James, all right? I want us to see from the book of James. Glory to Jesus. All right. Chapter, okay, three from verse, um, from verse 13, from verse 13. He said, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show them, show, rather, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. You see, conversation speaks of man of life, the way he lives, all right? So he's saying that um, the show of wisdom should be seen in how a person conducts his life. It's not just in the, what he teaches and preaches, all right? How he conducts his life. He said, that's where the true test of wisdom is determined in how a person lives his life. You see, all right? Verse 14, he said, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, he said, glory not and lie not against the truth. He said, this wisdom descended not from above. You see, but it's earthly, sensual, devilish. You see, it says any supposed supernatural flow, all right, that is characterized by bitterness, envy, and strife. You see, you see that any revelation that comes to you, all right, as it were, and that comes to you in a way that positions you to want to be seen. You see, that positions you to want to project yourself. You want to be seen. All right, even to the what to the detriment of your brother. You see, you want to be seen. You see, because see, notice what he says first. Notice what he says first about wisdom. Now, the word wisdom here is used to describe all right supernatural operations. It's not just a mental, intellectual, you know, um, 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 based communication. The word wisdom here is used to describe supernatural flow. All right. Now he says the True test, the true measure of supernatural flow of the kingdom, all right, is in how it produces, all right, a reflection of excellence in how you live your life. So in other words, it is first for living. It is not first for teaching, for preaching. It's not first for ministry. It is first for what? For living. For living. You see, it is first, that is what he says in verse 13. In verse 13. You see, so when he says in 16, he said, What well, for where there, for where envy and strife is. Okay, no, um, from verse uh, 14. He said, But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, he said, Glory not and lie not against the truth. All right. The next one says, He said, This wisdom descended not from a book, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. You see, it's self-centered. You see, all right? Verse 16, he said, for where envy and strife is, where envy and competition against another. You, you understand that? You know? And strife is, he said, there is confusion and every evil work. But look at verse 17. He said, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. You see, pure. No rush. It's not competitive. It's not so that somebody will see you. No. It's pure. There is a peace and a purity about it. You see? He said, then peaceable. You see? There is, you see, that peace is a, is a reflection of, is a depiction, rather, of the government of God. You see? That is, that is contented in itself. You, you see? It's, 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 in a, it's in a relaxed state. You understand that? No rush. 
<laughs> he said, and peaceable, gentle. You see, gentle and easy to be what? Entreated. You see, it doesn't matter how much demand is laid on it. He said, it will not break. It will not be frustrated. It cannot be stressed. You see, it, it can never come under stress. In fact, the more it is entreated, the more it multiplies. You understand? Have you seen people who tell you they have revelation that they are holding? It only belongs to their assembly. It only belongs to their group, their little small group. Do you understand that? He said, what is from God, with knowledge from God, is easy to be entreated. You see? Full of mercy. You see, that's another thing. Full of mercy. In other words, this expression of wisdom, the spirit that flows from God, all right, does not because of its position, because of your possession of it, make you think every other person, all right, are not important. You see, when some people have something, one small revelation, because of their small revelation, every other person don't know anything. They do, nobody knows anything anymore. You see, nobody knows anything. You see, they, they, they turn, they become critical. Have you seen believers, even ministers, who because of one small revelation, one small part of new creation reality, one small part of, of faith, one small part of redemption that they teach, all right, every other person is in error. They become critical, they become judgmental of the church of Jesus Christ. You see, they will call out the body of Christ, call it out in public. What, do you understand that? Do you understand that the church of Jesus Christ is the bride of Christ? Do you understand that? You know, you hear people say, all this, all this denomination. What do you mean, all this denomination? What do you mean, all this denomination? Didn't you come out of the denomination? See, all these, all these men of God. Have you people that talk like that? See, all these men of God. Even if you are going to bring correction to the church, you need to speak to that church with respect. Do you understand? You need to speak to the church with respect. You need to speak to the church with honor. Because that church that to you doesn't look beautiful, that church that to you, all right, is in error. Jesus is committed to perfecting with or without your supply. Do you understand that? He says he will, all right, he will receive that church to himself without spot, without wrinkle and blemish. You need to speak to that church with honor. You need to bring correction to it with honor, with respect. Have you seen people who, who are quick to call ministers false teachers? Once the person says something that they do not agree with, he's a false teacher. Or once he says something, all right, that let's say, for example, maybe in that very part, in that very subject, the man misses it. All right, they completely discredit him in spite of the many other things he taught correctly. They completely would discard him as false. You understand? They're ministers, and you just get shocked. Just, what, what's, what's wrong with you? What do you even know? What do you know that is shocking you? <laughs> All right. All right. It is full of mercy. Full of mercy, full of mercy, full of mercy, and good fruit, and good fruit, without partiality. Do you see that? You see, without partiality. Now, what is partiality? Now, listen. He says this genuine flow of the spirit of God, all right, does not exalt one above the other. You see, does it? You know, people start saying things like, "We are the." We are the, you know, this group of we are, we are the one because, because this unveiling of truth, all right, is in emphasis is stronger in your group. So you not think you are the one, you are the one, you know, that cutting edge mindset. We are the one, we are the, every other one, every other one is old wine skin. You understand that? Every other one is false. 
We are the one. We are the cutting edge. You know, we, 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 we are the one. We are the remnant. We, we are the kingdom. You see? You know, a couple of years back, I got so tired of, you know, many young emerging leaders, you know, centers acting this way that when I get invitations from maybe from amongst the young emerging centers and I get in, in, invitations from the denominational structure, I will prefer, I will accept the denominational structure invitation. I won't go to the emerging because I was beginning to see the pride. I was beginning to see what he calls here partiality. You see, I was beginning to see it. I know that if I go to the denominational circle, I will do a lot more work. I will, it will cost me, it will take me so much time to lay foundation. I will sweat more I would than I would, but I will take up the other. Just to show people that, see, listen, the church is not a small group. You see? It's a complete entire structure. You know, it's a body. It's a body. He says, and without hypocrisy. All right. So much to say here, you know, but, you know, that would be taking us <laughs> in a different direction. But, you know, but very important admonition and instruction. All right. That will require that what, like the scripture says, we take heed to ourselves. That we take heed to ourselves. That we take heed to ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God forever. All right. Now, so, now, so, he wasn't just talking to you about wisdom, like we said, you know, intellectual, you know, communication based. No, he uses the word wisdom to describe, all right, the character and nature of everything that flows or that comes from God. That is why he says, verse 15, he said, this, he said, um, okay, verse 17, rather, he said, but the wisdom that is from above, the wisdom that is from above, you see, the word wisdom here is used to describe, all right, the flow of the spirit. Whatever comes, whether it comes as divine illumination, whether it comes as a word of knowledge, whether it comes as, you know, revelation, understanding, into truth, whether it comes as interpretations, you see, whether it comes as the flow of the miraculous, you see, all are what I refer to here as wisdom that comes from above, which is said to be what? First pure, you see, then peaceable, gentle, all right, easy to be entreated, you see, full of mercy and good fruits, full of mercy and good fruits, full of mercy, he says, and good fruit. So you see, in the place of fellowship, all right, as the believer, you know, engages the Lord in meditation, in prayer, all right, you see, you will find that there is a uniqueness that characterizes, all right, the, 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 the flow of divine illumination. You see, there is a boldness, there is a, there is a consistency, all right, of of the character of purity. You see, there is a consistency of the character of compassion, of compassion. You see, that, that characterizes, all right, that outburst of divine illumination. You see, which as the believer fellowships, as the believer in fellowship pays attention to these innuendos, to these characteristic, you know, you know, uh, traits, you see, that accompanies, you know, this outflow of wisdom, all right, in the place of meditation, coming as what? Divine illumination, revelation, understanding, you see. It is on the foundation of this, all right, that every other supernatural outflow find expression, you see. 
When the believer understands this and functions like this, he will not experience uncertainty, all right, when it comes to what, you know, flowing in other expressions of the spirit. You see? You know, the same way that as you meditate, for example, as you meditate and revelation understanding begin to come to you, for example, from scriptures, as you meditate on scriptures, revelation understanding begins to come, which you judge by cross-checking with other scriptures. You see, over time, that practice of both receiving revelation understanding, all right, and also judging it by checking with other scriptures, all right, that practice builds a confidence, all right, in you, all right, and causes, all right, your, your, your heart's ability to process and express, to release and exercise itself, all right, in other flows of the spirit with confidence, with confidence. You see, so much so that if you indulge in this, you won't come to a place, for example, when it comes to word of knowledge, all right? For example, you receive a word of knowledge and you're wondering, should I, should I, what if I miss it? What if, what if it's not correct? What? No, no, all of that, you know, you know, wondering, you know, uncertainty, all right, ought to have been removed from the equation, from the, as a result of what? The, the, your, that, as a result of the practice of the exercising of your heart, where divine illumination is consigned as it relates to what? Meditation. You know, in meditation, truth done on you, expanded layer of revelation and standing, which you now judge. You judge it by taking other scriptures. As you judge by taking other scriptures, you see, what you are doing is, is it, you are, you are, you are, that is another dimension to the exercising of your heart. You see, you are, you are learning to, no rush. So it's not so you receive a new revelation and just jump out and start preaching it. But you judge it. You judge it by what? Subjecting to what? To other portions of scriptures. All right? Then you further judge it by what? Not being in a hurry to share it, but to further contemplate on it. Because as you, the more you contemplate on it, the more the other sides, the other layers, all right, of illumination, to that illumination, open up. So see, all of this helps to build both confidence and assurance, all right, which in turn becomes what major bedrock, all right, for in your heart when it comes to what the exercise of the word of wisdom. So that when you're going to give a word of wisdom, you're not wondering, what if I miss it? What if it's not correct? Hey, what? No, all of that are removed. All to have been removed, all right? Within the environment of the exercising of the half in fellowship, in communion. This is one of the secrets of the early church. That's why you look at the early church. Many of the schools we, use, we do today, today, they didn't have it. They didn't have schools of how to teach what to Teach what to walk in word of knowledge. Teach what to walk in word of wisdom. How to teach what to heal the sick. Now, not that it's all wrong. We all do that now, all right? It's just a measure put in place, all right? Because of a major default, you see? But the church didn't have that. Because everyone was exposed, all right? To the rudiment of the exercising of the heart, where fellowship, where contemplation, where prayer, you see, is concerned. So it's the reason why when it came to the expression of the supernatural among the early church, there were no uncertainty expressed by any one of them. There was no, you know, you know, they didn't define faith as risk. No, 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 no. They didn't understand stepping out in the supernatural, all right, as risk. No, 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 no. Oh, glory to Jesus. Glory.
Oh, glory to Jesus. All right. Now, remember that earlier, all right, I was saying, all right, in still in the same context, that just like certain factors present in the environment in which a person is raised, all right, go a long way in determining, all right, um, the function, all right, the peculiar, you know, function, the peculiar you know, strength, the unique, you know, um, 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 strength or qualities, all right, about a person, which in turn makes it responsible for certain persons being referred to, being described as being um, very imaginative, all right, as being too illogical, has been too emotional. You understand? Or somebody you said you said it. I said this is a very. I know my dad. My dad is a very strong willed man. Or you say my wife very strong willed, or my brother very strong willed. You understand that? Now, of course, I understand that. Every time when we say that, a lot of times we sometimes describe people. We mostly actually describe people that way. Right, from a negative perspective. You see, actually, there is a positive, all right, or there is a positive side to being very emotional. You should be emotional. In fact, being emotional is part of what it takes to be a truly spiritual person. Being imaginative. Because you see, you can't, if you look at scriptures, people who were said to be spiritual, all right, were holistic in their spirituality. You see, people who were said to be spiritual, you see that in order to, in the way that God dealt with them to help them attain the level of spirituality, all right, that they have now come to be known for, all right? You see that God engaged other gates, other senses of their souls. You see, he engaged other senses of their souls. See, one such example was Abraham, or he is Abraham. You see, if you notice, in the way that God dealt with Abraham, all right, God included, you see, in order for God to help to form him, all right, God also had to deal, had to deal with his soul. God had to, you know, bring Abraham into experiences that triggered his imagination, that triggered his emotions, that triggered his sense of reason. You see that triggered, you know, his 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 his, his senses. You see, glory to God. So there are there are factors, there are fact just like in the natural, just like in the natural, right? Just like in relation to the senses of the body, all right? Just like the senses of the soul, all right? Where you have certain factors that are responsible. Certain factors that are responsible for, you know, um, for how a person, all right, comes to be known, all right, as someone who is very imaginative. All right, comes to be known as someone who is, you know, too emotional, you know, too logical or strong willed. There are factors, all right, that the believer can pay attention, attention to that in turn, all right, would help him to become, you know, um, to become um, sensitive, you know, to become, you know, active to have his senses spiritual senses become active all right where a person also can be said to be given to visions can be said to be given to supernatural noise can be said to be given to supernatural impression can be said you see
Now, the, the giving of ourselves, all right, the committing of ourselves to these factors, all right, which we take the responsibility of for, you know, constituting the environment that we plug our hearts into is something that can be done deliberately. All right? I, I, I hope you understood what I just said. You see, you know, um, as compared to, um, as compared to, um, you know, the impact of certain factors in a person's natural environment, which in turn informs, you know, the the exercise of the 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 of of his soul and body, all right, you know, in regards to that, you know, you know, as a person grows up, the person is not necessarily directly responsible, but certain persons who are knowledgeable about these things can actually see to that. For example, I've 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 done meetings or done courses, all right, for parents. Right to help to where we taught them how to help their children become intelligent. No, 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 no. I'm not just talking about you know, you know, something dependent on the school you put to, you put them in. No, you put them in school, that, that's not even the issue. They should, yes, you owe them that. But beyond besides that, all right, we've had classes or some kind of academy where you know I teach people how to determine how very intelligent you want your child to become. It can be done. You see, an intelligent child is not an accident. Do you understand that? An intelligent child is not an accident. You know, where they tell you that, you know, certain scientists, you know, you know that are, have, are, are renowned for their level of intelligence, all right, are known to use a larger part of their brain than the rest of humanity. See, listen. No, nobody is born. Nobody comes into the world from the womb <laughs> with the gift of intelligence. There are factors that make a child extremely intelligent. There are factors. I mean, there are factors that makes a child extremely intelligent. The factors. And when I teach this course, one of the things I tell parents, all right, for those who are just becoming parents, who are new, newly wedded, you know, folks, all right, I teach them, take them through courses where they actually start from when the child is still in the womb. See, when the child is still in the womb, that's where you start, you know, in a sense. You don't start when the child has been born. You see? Because, see, the formation of a child's character, you see, actually begins from the womb. You see, determining how brilliant, how intelligent you want the child to become actually begins from the womb. You see, this is the reason why we tell parents, see, listen, being a parent is a lot of work. See, you see people just, you know, just love each other, just want to marry. <laughs> They don't understand, a lot of believers don't understand the gravity of that statement scripture made, where it says, train up a child. You see, in the way he should what? He should go. A lot of, a lot of Christian couples, a lot of believing couples don't understand the weight of marrying. You see, a lot of believers, when they want to marry, all they see is themselves, their own affair, they are selfish. I love you, you love me, let's kiss each other, let's Enjoy, let's travel up and down. <laughs> but when it comes to parenting, lots of believers fail. They fail. Parenting is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. That is why how intelligent, how brilliant, how spiritual, spiritually alive, you see, how spiritually civilized, intellectually civilized, your child becomes, all right, is primarily based or determined by you. So it's not even the school. No, you, you first, you. Because when your child is still in your womb, 
There's no school, no school, no school. <laughs> school don't ask, have access to your children until they are born. You see, the first school your children are exposed to, all right, as soon as they are conceived is your environment. The environment first of your own emotions, your own imagination. So that's how I tell you that. You see, how you, <laughs> all right, let's not go into that course now, all right? <laughs> you want that course, you need to enroll, all right? Newly wedded couples, <laughs> you need to enroll. <laughs> Or if you're, you're listening, you're married, you're pregnant, you need to enroll. Yes, don't say, I'm pregnant, I'm very tired. Yes, didn't you count the cost <laughs> before you took it? <laughs> Jesus said, <laughs> any king <laughs> that wants to go to war <laughs> must sit down first and count the cost. <laughs> of course, of course, that is one of the reasons why, you know, the, the sisters, the women need the support of their husband. But a lot of men too do understand this. They might become pregnant, they are hardly around. You know, it's not a joke. I tell brothers, it's not a joke when your wife is pregnant. You know, some of my brothers just jokingly say, you know what, let her carry it in her she. No, it's not a joke when your wife is pregnant. It's not only about her health, her, no. All right, in addition to that, it's about what? The framing of the personality of the child. It begins while the child is still in the womb. It begins why the child is still in the womb. But of course, we understand because things like this are not taught in the church, are hardly taught in the church. So it's one of the reasons why, on one hand, all right, the, the process of being pregnant and carrying the child to full term, for most women, for most couples, is a lonely journey, worked on largely by just the women. Most men are hardly involved in the process. You see, don't forget what the scripture says, Psalm 127. It says, children are the heritage of the Lord. All right? They are the arrows. All right? I'm paraphrasing. They are the arrows, all right, in his hand as a mighty man, with which what? He speaks with his enemies at the gates. So if we understand that, then as a brother and as a sister, who approach the decision of getting married, with great sense of, you know, responsibility. Then the decision about when to have our children, the decision about how to, you know, walk through that phase, all right? From the time that, you know, pregnancy, you know, comes in to the time that the child is born, to the time that the child, you know, is being raised, is something we approach with great, you know, level of responsibility. Hallelujah. All right. So I was saying this, why the factors that helps to inform, you know, how sharpened, all right, we become mentally, you know, the factor that help to, you know, in, you know, determine, you know, you know, how exercised we become, you know, emotionally, you know, we, you know, in our, in our, in our, in a in our reasoning, in our, in our imagination, all right. The factors that determine that are largely the result of other people. You understand? They are largely the result of other people. Because as a child, you couldn't take responsibility as a child to determine the factors that are framing you, framing your imagination, framing your emotion. No, 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 you're a child. See, but you see, on the other hand, as a believer, in relation to your heart, all right, the factor, all right, that, you know, help to determine, all right, how sensitive, how spiritually intelligent, all right, how spiritually intelligently aware you become, right, can be determined by you. That can be determined by you. Can be determined by you.
can be determined by you. All right. So, um, um, so what we are going to be doing, or right, so that we don't lose the thought, all right, is we will be continuing from here in the next episode. Now, in the next episode, we'll be going straight into these factors. What are the factors that you can put in place to help to determine, all right, the degree of your sensitivity, the degree of your spiritual awareness? What, what are these factors and what are the things you can do to set up these factors, to inform these factors? What are the things that you can do, you see, to help determine the degree of mastery you have, all right, in supernatural leading, the degree of mastery you have in sensitivity to the angelic, in sensitivity to the kingdom of God, in sensitivity to the demonic. You see, because you have a responsibility to descend the demonic and squash their power. You see, and end. Because sometimes, because a lot of people don't, believers don't understand it, a lot of people don't understand when they are being oppressed. They don't know when they are being ambushed by demons. Many believers would have finished acting in the light of the influence of demonic thoughts before they realized that it was all the devil. You notice? It's after it's all said and done, that's it was the devil. It was the devil. So we are going to be jumping right into this in the next episode, which is just, which is just seven days from now. So the countdown begins now. So we want you to look forward to it. All right, we'll be explaining these things very simply, very clearly, very succinctly, all right, in, in no mistakeable way, so that what you will be able to have them at the back of your hand and commit to the practice. You see, spiritual things are this simple. They, are, they can be simply taught. They can be simply understood. They can be mastered. Glory to Jesus. Forever forever hallelujah hallelujah glory 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 to god okay somebody asked a question i would like to um i want to quickly touch a little bit on a few minutes ago um is um is is it okay how do we balance our soul's awareness how do we balance our soul's awareness now um now, uh, if I understand your question, all right. Now, where a person's um, emotional, or let me put it this way, where a person's soul expression, all right, are uh, more, um, or have, you know, or tilt more towards um, negative tendencies, you know, where a person's emotional gates or senses, all right, tilts more, all right, towards emotional tendencies, all right, they can actually be corrected. Now, what does it mean when we say a person's emotional tendencies, all right, all right, have in, you know, a negative tendency, all right? For example, sometimes you hear people say, this person is very emotional. A lot of times it's in a negative sense, all right? That means she's easily given to tears, you know, or she easily gets angry. She easily, once you tell her something you know she shouldn't hear, she can easily become discouraged. Say, no, she's very emotional, she's very emotional. No, that, 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 that's negative. You see, that's negative. There is a positive, you know, you know, emotional tendency where when a person is said to be very emotional, all right, it is suggestive what it is suggestive of an of a matured, you know, spiritual administration of a person's emotional gates. Or where a person is said to be very imaginative. This person is very imaginative, very imaginative. All right, all right. There is there is a positive tendency that can be cultivated. That can be cultivated. Now, if you if you study the scriptures very carefully, you will see that. With Israel, all right, the way that God dealt with them, the way that God brought forth his word to them, all right, God did it in such a way that, all right, it helped in the, it helped in the fashioning, it helped in the framing, you see, 
of their emotional personality. It was one of the reasons why the way in which God spoke to them, all right, of course, through the, you know, ministries of prophet and all of that, of course, within the context of the Hebrew language, all right, was in a way that was pictorial, all right, was in a way that was very imaginative. You see, God spoke to Israel in a way that engaged their imaginations, in a way that engaged their emotions, in a way that engaged their reasoning, in a way that engaged their will. You see, it's one of the reasons why, all right, if you look at the, the when you look at the, the, the characteristics of faith, all right, it is largely, ex, they are largely extracted, the characteristics of faith are largely extracted from what? The faith life of saints, right? In Bible time. You see, now, in the characterization of faith, in how they demonstrated it, all right? What God was actually doing for them was the exercising of their will. You see, that is the reason you find out that in the instructions God gave to them in many occasions in scriptures, it required that what? That they moved from one point to another point physically. You see, that was a requirement amongst other things to help activate the gate of their will. You see, in some other context, you will see God engage them, all right, visually. God was engaging them visually. You see, God will speak to them in a way that, that, that necessitated visualization. That was God speaking to them in a way that triggered their gate of imagination. All right, on the other hand, you will see God speak to them in a way that triggered their emotion. Many a time, God will demand that they rejoice. Many a time, God will bring forth a prophetic word to them, all right, that, would, that will compel emotional reaction. You see, it's the reason why today you can't walk with God. Have you seen some of our churches, our assemblies, that is as quiet as a graveyard, and they think that is the way God is? <laughs> you know, they look at other assemblies, that is full of life and, you know, and think that they are too worldly, they are too noisy. They are too noisy. See, there, can, there can't be authentic, holistic spirituality that does not include, all right, the activities, that does not include the participation in divine process of the soul. The soul must participate. That is the reason when you look at the subject of faith, faith, all right, it requires what James says without corresponding action. You see, the corresponding action without which faith is dead, all right, comes from what? The exercising or the engagement or the participation in divine process of what? Your soul and your body. So without the corresponding action, all right, which captures what? the engagement or participation of your soul and body in divine processes, there can be no what? No operation of faith. There can be no result. There can be no result. There can be no result. So it's one of the reasons why God will speak to Israel and you expect emotional response. You expect them to rejoice. You expect them to be excited. You expect them to get up. To get up. You see, and this man understood this. How many remember the story of David? David, when the child born to him from um, the mother of Solomon, remember? Um, um, that's um, Uriah's wife, remember? You know, the child died. All right? That child died. When the child was sick, David was crying and praying to God, you know, and all of that. But the moment the word of the Lord came to him, yes, thank you, Beshiba. The moment the word of the Lord came to him, all right, brought correction to him and told him the child was going to die. There's nothing you can do about it, David. The Bible says, listen carefully, is that as soon as David received the clear word of the Lord, all right, the child died. He received the clear word of the Lord. The Bible said that David got up 
washed himself, washed all the ashes away, and got up and went back into his business as though nothing happened. You see, the word of the clear word of the Lord that came to him settled him emotionally. And you see how believers today they wonder why they are not effective in faith. Yet the word of the Lord will come to them over a certain issue, they will continue to sorrow. They'll begin to play blackmail on God, continue to be emotional negatively. Do you see the same David? You wonder why the same David, all right? Why David could do that? David had been practicing that. Remember, long before this time, when, while he was still running from Saul, remember? While he was in Ziegland, where the enemy had come, taking their wives, taking everyone. David and every of the men with him broke down in tears and were crying and in, they were broken down in discouragement, all right? But the scripture says, after a while, David encouraged himself in the Lord, all right? He encouraged himself in the Lord, all right? Then went to seek the face of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Listen, the word of the Lord, the clear word of the Lord came to David while he was, an, while he was in an encouraged state. It didn't come to him while he was in a discouraged state. So David knew that for the clear word of the Lord to come, all right, I need to put my soul together. Do you understand that? I need to put my soul together. So the man David what, became encouraged. He saw the Lord. And the word of the Lord came clear. He said, pursue them. All right? You will not only catch up with them, you will overtake them. Not only overtake them, you will recover all. You recover all. You see, one of the factors you see there, all right, is a mature, the matured exercise, all right, of David's emotional response to the word of the Lord. You see, to the word of the Lord. You see, it was that track record David leveraged on when years later, after being king, his son died. We're not saying that was the will of God, but the son died. He was sorrowing, you know, but when the clear word of the Lord came, the scripture says David got up, washed himself, and just went about his business. The grief ended by the word of the Lord. It ended by the word of the Lord. You see, that strength you see David demonstrate is not a gift. You know, the things people see, they, they are quick to call it impartation. They are quick to call it a grace that they want to release to them. No, it is the direct result of what? Of practice, of the exercise. You see, the exercise of his what? Of his soul in response to the word of the Lord. To the word of the Lord. So when you think of the, the stalwartness of David's spiritual stature, it was not a special a peculiar gift God gave to him. David was a disciplined spiritual person. David subjected himself. A lot of people talk about the David, the, the key of David. Talk about <laughs> nobody talks about the discipline of David, but they love the key of David. They love the keys of David. Hmm? They love the throne of David. You know those dimensional. They love the throne of David. All right. They love the you know the, the anointing of David. But nobody talks about the discipline of David. We want to teach on the tabernacle of David. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, someone says the sure message of David. <laughs> glory to Jesus. Forever. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. So in our next episode, all right, we're having to say this, you know, to help us, you know, have an anticipation, all right, and look forward to it. We'll be going straight away, all right, into the factors, all right, that you can see to their implementation. You can see to their setting up in your environment, in your environment, all right, towards what the, 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 the exercising, the, the heightening, you know, exercising of your senses, all right? Towards the, 
the, the activation of your sense of visions, your sense of impressions. You see, your, the senses of your spirit, of your heart. So this is what we are going to be delving immediately into in our next session. So we trust that this session has blessed you. And we pray that God's grace continually, continually multiply in you, multiply to you by his epignosis, the epignosis of God, the knowledge of God in the name of Jesus Christ. So looking forward to seeing you again in the next episode. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Forever. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Love you, sir. Love you, too. Thank you, sir. Thank you, pastor. Thank you, sir.